So today we're going to talk about elimination with multiplication. So we could use elimination by multiplying the top equation by negative 2. Sorry. Actually, negative 3 would work. And the bottom equation by negative 2, we could solve it for y and graph it. Today we're going to use elimination with multiplication. So, 20a plus 10b equals 30, and 10a minus 30b equals 50. The first thing I want to do is look for opposite signs. So, these don't have opposite signs. These do have opposite signs. So, the easiest thing for me to do is to utilize right here these two that have opposite signs. Only they don't cancel each other out yet because they don't have opposite coefficients. So we're going to use multiplication to make opposite coefficients. So I'm going to multiply the top of this equation by 3. When I multiply the top of the equation by 3, I'm going to distribute and I get 60a plus 30b equals 90. Rewrite the second equation is 10a minus 30b equals 50. Now we're right back to what we did yesterday, right? I've got opposite coefficients, so I eliminate them. So the only difference between today and yesterday is just making opposite coefficients. So once I eliminate them, I can now add my two equations together and I get 70a equals 140. I've got a zero on each side, so isn't it a legal move to take a zero off of both sides? Divide by 7, divide by 7, a equals 2. Now that I know one of my numbers, I can find the other number. Which equation would you rather use, the top one or the bottom one? I like the top one as well. So the top one, I'm going to use, and I'm going to say 20a's plus 10b's has to equal 30. I already know that a equals 2, so 40 plus 10b equals 30. Subtract 40 from both sides, and I get 10b equals negative 10. Divide by 10, divide by 10, B equals negative 1. On your homework tonight, if you don't do this next step, I'm not going to give you credit. Jeremiah, are you paying attention? All right, so. Back that up. I want this to be red. The intersection. Of the two lines. is what? Two comma negative one is the intersection of my two lines. Every single problem, you will write the sentence, the intersection of the two lines is. Why would Mrs. Muller do that? Because I just want to torture you? No. Why would I do that? With every single one of these problems, I want you to remind you what you're doing, right? You're finding the intersection of those two lines. Does everybody understand that I want that for every single problem? All right. So here are my steps. Sorry, there's two twos here. Number one, choose a variable to eliminate. We chose B, right, because it has opposite signs. Second, multiply to create the inverse. I had to multiply the top equation by 3 to get positive 30 and negative 30, so I could eliminate. Eliminate and add the two equations. We did that, right? We got 70a equals 140. We solved for a, and then we substituted it back in. Questions? Yes? Where did I get 3? I looked at these, and I said they have their inverses, right? Or they have opposite signs. What could I multiply 10 by to make it 30? Not negative 3, just 3. Because if I multiply it by 3, it's going to become 30, and now they're inverses of each other. Okay? All right, go ahead and write that one down. 
Okay. Let's try another one. So this time I'm looking for opposite signs. Do these have opposite signs? No. Do these have opposite signs? No. So not only am I going to have to multiply, I'm also going to have to multiply by a negative because I've got to make opposite signs. So it's really easy when they're factors of each other. So 2 and 7. Is 2 a factor of 7? No. That's not going to help me out too much. I could mess around with 2 and 7, but let's check out 3 and 6. Is 3 a factor of 6? Yes. So the easiest thing for me to do would be to multiply the bottom equation by 2 to make it 6. But not just 2, I want to multiply it by negative 2 because I'm trying to make opposites, opposite coefficients. So I'm going to rewrite this. I've got 6g minus 2h equals 10. When I multiply my bottom equation by negative 2, I get negative 6g plus 14h equals 9 times 2 is 18, right? Sorry? 9, oh, 9 times 2 is 18, but 20 times 2 would be 40, right? So what do you think this number is going to be? Sorry, 38. We're going to do a lot of number talk when I come back from the break. You should be thinking about these numbers without doing this. Right? So 9 times 2 is 18. If this number was 20, 20 times 2 would be 40. So we know that number is just a little bit less than 40. Okay, and it's positive because this is a negative times a negative is a positive. Or the opposite of a negative is a positive. And all right, so now that I've got opposite coefficients, I can cancel 6g and negative 6g. When those cancel, now I can just add the two equations. So 14h's and negative 2h's makes a total of 12h's equals 48. If I have 12 H's, H's equals 48, how much does 1 H equal? 4. Now I can go ahead and substitute that back into my original equation. Which one would you rather use, the top one or the bottom one? I'd rather use the top one. This one's got a negative 19 in it. Does it matter which one I use? We're talking about an intersection, right? Almost like you're talking about where's the store. So no matter which road you take, aren't they both going to lead to the same store? Right? So you could be on one street or the other street. You're both going to be at the same store when you get there. Okay, so I've got six G's. Oh, I should probably take that off of the dotted line. So I've got six G's minus two H's equals ten. I already found out my h is equal to 4. So I'm going to substitute 4 in there. Now I have 6g minus 8 equals 10. I'm going pretty quick on this because this is what we did yesterday, right? Add 8 to both sides. Not only is it what we did yesterday, but it's what we've been doing since the beginning of the school year. 6g equals, I might as well make a little nice cancellation sign there, 18. If 6 G's is 18, how much is 1 G? 3. All right, so my last step is to go ahead and write this out. The intersection of the two lines. is what? We've got 4 and a 3. A, B, C, D, E, F. G comes first before H, right? So 3, comma, 4. Questions? No questions? Okay, copy that one down. 
Okay, so it says to eliminate the variable y in the system of equations, multiply the second equation by which number? Please don't yell out, just put in your clicker what you would multiply the bottom equation by to eliminate. You guys did. I've got a prediction. It's going to be split. Oh, not too split. Good, I'm glad to see that. Why would some people pick A? Kaden? Because 2 times 3 is 6. But is that going to completely eliminate it? No. no. A negative 3 would, right? So the answer is D. If you multiply both, I'm sorry, if you multiply the bottom of your equation by 4, this would become negative 4. And then these would get eliminated. All right, brainstorm. What would you multiply to eliminate the Z's? Take a look at the Z's. All right, if you don't know what you would multiply to eliminate them, what do both of them need to be in order to be eliminated? Twelve, right? The top one needs to be 12z, and the bottom one needs to be negative 12z. So why don't you guys try and do that with this one? What would you multiply the top equation by and the bottom equation by in order to get 12? It does not have to be the same number. Alex Soto, what are you going to multiply the top by? If I want this to be 12, what would I multiply the top by? 3. How about Evan? If I want this to be 12, or actually it would be negative 12, what would I multiply the bottom by? Can you guys do it now? Now it's the same process. All right, Jacob, why don't you help me out? So, when you multiplied the top equation by 3, what did you get? 9w plus 12z equals negative 75. Don't forget that negative. Awesome. How about Gilbert? The bottom equation, if we multiply, what do we get? Excellent. How about Frankie? What do I do from here? Good job. I have opposite coefficients that cancel each other out. How about Kleiser? What's my next step? So what do you get when you add 9w and 8w? 17w's are going to equal What's negative 75 and positive 24? It's got to be something pretty close to 50, right? Negative 51. Without even doing the math, when I divide by 17, I should be thinking to myself, what's 7 times 2? 14. Does that work? What's 7 times 3? 21. Does that work? Does that make sense? It does. You guys follow what I was doing? I was guessing and checking, right? So now that I know what W equals, now what must I do, Philip? What? Substitute. Good vocabulary. Which one do you want to substitute it into? Bottom one? I agree. That's the easier one, right? So two W's minus 3z, move this out of the way, is equal to 6, and we already know that our w is negative 3. So I'm going to continue as negative 6 minus 3z equals 6, add 6 to both sides, 
and I get negative 3z equals 12. If negative 3z is 12, then 1z must be negative 4. Finally, the intersection of the two lines is what class? Negative 3, negative 4. Move this up a little bit. Negative 3, negative 4. Because W comes before Z. Make it a little smaller. There we go. Question. Do you guys need a second to copy the rest of that down? Everybody good? I don't think we need another one, do we? What's the difference between this? What would I have to do with this one? First you have to switch, right? The K's and the J's need to be switched. Then what? Then multiply it. You could do, let's switch it and see what happens. You guys don't have to write it out. Just watch me. K plus 9J equals 13. We want to make sure they're lined up first, right? Now what would you do? You could either multiply the bottom by negative 3 or multiply the top by negative 2. Either one, right? They both make sense. I'd probably multiply the bottom. You know why? Anybody know why? Why I picked the bottom? Why would you pick the bottom, Caden? Because if you multiply the bottom, the numbers aren't as big. The numbers aren't as big, exactly. That's why I would do it, too. Okay, I want to switch out to think aloud. All right, with your partner, decide how to multiply to use elimination to solve the system. So quietly, think about it, think about it, and then I'm going to ask you as a class what you would multiply the bottom equation by. So class, one, two, three. Four. Good job. All right, think about it. Bottom equation. Class, one, two, three. Two. Two. Good. Think about it. Bottom equation. Class, one, two, three. Two. Negative two. Good. Okay, look at it. Think about it. What about top equation? Not yet, not yet. Let everybody look. Top equation. Class, one, two, three. Two. Good job. Let me pick. How about bottom equation? Think about it. Think about it. So let's Training to see. Class, one, two, three. I heard a three, but I think I think he caught it. It's negative two, right? Okay, let's see. Ooh. This one's harder, right? We'd have to multiply both, right? Three and four. One of them's going to have to be negative. Right, Christian? All right, I think you guys got this. So I don't think I even need to go this far. Okay, so I do not want you shifting. Everybody free. Miss Liz and I spend a lot of time, sometimes we'll just stare at this screen for a good 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out what we want to sum this up at. And then I don't even get to it sometimes. Well, we're going to get to it every single day because this is very important. And I don't want this to be cute to have you tune out, put your stuff away, and get ready to go. This is, let's figure out what we did today. So everybody needs to stop writing. We're not writing until I say, on your assignment sheet. So everybody needs to just be paying attention. So, what did you learn today? Elimination, but specifically with multiplication. Good. Alex. When is it necessary to multiply using elimination? Mm 
Okay. When we have to multiply is specifically when they're not opposites yet, right? They may be opposites, but their coefficients aren't opposites yet. So we've got to make them opposites. Okay, the person next to you is absent. How would you explain the process for choosing a variable and multiplying to eliminate it? Who's brave enough to bring up that one? Because there is a process. You look at two equations and there's something that goes off in your head. You say, I've got to figure out which one I'm going to eliminate. How do you decide? What's the first thing you do? What are you looking for? Opposite, Opposite what? Opposite signs first, right? Then what's the second thing you're looking for? Um, you're looking for a number that you can multiply so that you make opposite coefficients, okay? First you're looking for opposite signs, then you're looking how you're going to make them opposite coefficients. So on your assignment sheet, in order to solve this system of equations, first I would, then I would. Go ahead and complete that now. You guys did a good job. Thank you.